Hey guys, this is Lonnie. Just a real quick today, I would like to go over three new features from Coding Matter 4.0.4, which was just released yesterday. Um, we've got a bunch of bug fixes in there, of course, uh, a lot of smaller enhancements, improved testing, uh, improve, improvements on the feature testing uh, to catch a bunch of edge cases on that and, and clear some things up, get that working smoother for you guys, uh, as long as, or as well as three brand new features that I would like to cover. All right. So the first one of these is going to be the test feature I talked about, fabricators. Okay, so let's look at here now. I've made a new command here, fakes. And now what a fabricator does is it allows you to create fake data for while you're testing. Uh, obviously, I'm not in a test here, so we're going to ignore that part. But the way you'll probably use it most, uh, and there are some other ways you can use it, I would highly suggest that you take a look at the documentation for this because there are some other ways you can use it. The way I think you'll probably use it most, though, is you can take and put it on a model and you can add a fake method. Um, now, if you don't want to dirty up your model, I totally get it. And what I would suggest doing, and I think this is mentioned in the docs, is you create a um, another class that extends your model just to keep your fake. So you can keep that in your test folder somewhere, uh, your support folder or something like that to keep it all separate, but that way still provide the fake command. The fake command takes a, a, uh, an instance of faker, and faker is a third-party library that uh, you have to do composer install to get, but if you're doing testing, you've got to do that anyway. Uh, and so faker is now included with the package, and what faker does is allows you to create lots of different data types, just random data types. Uh, and you can see here, oops, this should probably be username generated. Um, what it does is, in this fake command, it just returns data. It returns the fake data that you want to do. Okay, so like you're, you're creating uh, some tests you want to run through, but you need a user object, right? And so when you do your user object, you don't want to have to specify everything every time while you're writing your test, because that takes a lot of time, makes it not nearly as much fun to test. So what you do is you, you add this fake method here, add the elements that you want to be able to provide in your class, and you give it you use faker to create random generate stuff. And faker's got all kinds of things you can use, phone numbers, emails, uh, sentences, paragraphs, images, all, all kinds of things. Most of the stuff you'll ever need, you can get from faker, um, right? And so you just return the fields. Now, in my user table that I've got this attached to has a lot more than this, as you'll see in a second. Um, but for this example, we're just going to use these four fields. We're going to say these are the allowed fields in the model. And these are the data it should return. In this case, it's generating for username. I'm using the first name thing here. Uh, and it'll generate a first name. For email, it'll give me a random email. It'll give me a random phone number. And it'll give me an image URL that we can pretend is for our avatar here. All right. So the way you would use this, there's a couple different ways. The long-winded way is to create a new uh, is to use Fabricator and then create a new instance of it, passing it the name of the model that you want to use. Now, if you look here, there's a few different things you can set it to, um, but because of the way we're using it, you don't need to touch those most of the time. Uh, so you create a new instance of Fabricator with the model that you want to fake. Uh, and now you can also set some overrides, like you can set data. If, it's, if instead of uh, allowing a random username, you want a um, to specify the username so you can test it, then you can do that with set overrides here, and then you use Fabricator Create to create a user. And we'll take a look at see what that looks like here. Okay, so this has created a new user variable. Remember, we uh, we did a dump and dive here. Create a new user variable, gave us a fake email, fill that out for us. Our override that we specified here uh, of Jerry is there for username. And it also created a random phone number for us and gave us a URL. So this will be really, really handy during testing. It makes things a lot easier. But that's kind of cumbersome to type out. You really don't want to do that. Not that much fun, right? So let's comment that stuff out. We'll move this down here. And uncomment these two. And what we're doing here, we're loading the test helper. And in our test helper, um, it provides a couple commands. The one we're going to use here is the fake command, which does all of this for us. And all we got to do is request, hey, I want to fake this user model here. This is the data I want to override. All right, so one line takes care of it all. Now, if we go look at it, <laughs> uh, I'll 
because I've already got one of it. All right. Um, then it'll, it'll do the same thing for us in one line of code. So this is a huge thing for your testing productivity, and I hope you guys are really getting into testing. Um, we improve the, the testing capabilities built into the framework every release to make it a little bit easier, uh, a little bit more productive for you to test your applications and make stronger applications that are less fragile uh, and easier to change for you guys. All right. So that was the first thing that we've added. Now the second one I want to point out today is a new um, command add to the system to clear your cache. Now let's say you've been uh, had a bunch of cache built up. You've used it to cache some data from the database. You've used it to cache your pages. Uh, and something's gone wrong. You just need to, to clear it all out and start over, right? Without manually doing it and going into your cache folder here and deleting all the files. It's really kind of a pain in the butt. So to make that a little bit easier, uh, we've created the cache clear command. You want to see how that works, all right? So in this case, what we're going to do is when we visit the home page, we're going to cache the page. Very simple. Um, here we go. Prove that it works. So that was our first visit. Uh, 0 0.0031 seconds. There's nothing going on on this page. It probably won't save us a whole lot of time. Refresh it. Notice our, our uh, debug bar goes a bar goes away. Uh, so that's showing that our cache is working. So it takes about a half to a third of the time. Uh, now we do still allow this to work during full page caching. Um, okay, so we've generated a cache, and we come here, you see, there we go, there's our cache file that's been generated for that page, all right? Now, if we come over to here, use spark command and do cache clear. And what that will do is magically wipe out everything in your cache. Um, in this case, we're using the file cache. It just comes set up by default, but if you're using Redis um, or Memcache or any of the others, It'll take care of clearing out those two. Okay, now just to show, oh, so that's our new command. I don't know, hopefully it won't be too, uh, you won't need it too often, but for those times you do, it's there for you. All right, now the last thing I want to show today is the ability to run commands from within your code. Why would you want to do that? Well, we give a silly example here uh, just to demonstrate with our command. But let's say, as a use case, let's say you built a cron system. And in that cron system, you've got some commands that you'd like to run. You know, you've built them as commands because it's easy to be able to run them from the command line while you're building them. Um, you can test them that way. It's nice to be able to jump on your staging server or your production server and run it. But you also want to automate it at times, right? And so you want to use that command over. You don't want to make another library to you know, pull code in. It gets convoluted then. You don't want to have to do that. So you just want to use your command. Now you can do that, and there's a new global command that's always available, just simply called command, and it will run that. All right, so if we go back here, refresh your page to get it cached again, there we go. You can see it's cached again. So now I'm going to visit this other URL here, and it is going to run the cache clear command. And this way, there's something visible that we can actually see that, uh, that it works. There we go. Cache has been cleared, which is what we told to say here, and you see our cache just disappeared. So that can be really helpful. What about those times when you want to um, have parameters? You know, you've got to have a name. Well, let's say we want to um, create a new migration. Migrate, create, let's say create user table. So you would type it in just like you would type it in the command line. Yeah, however you would do it in the command line is how you would type it in here, right? So if we do that, we'll ignore that for now. Revisit it again. It tells us our cache has been cleared. Now if we go to database and migrations, we see here's our new our new um, migration for us. Okay, like I said, that can be really handy for cron jobs. It can also be handy um, sometimes while you're testing. Um, at different times, I'm sure other people find other great cases for it. Um, but we refactored the way commands work and get run so that you can now run this from the command line. All right. There's several other um, items that have been added. Most of them are fairly smaller. One that you may want to know about, the get field data from the database uh, result object. Now has two additional things. You can get the field type and the length across your tables. Uh, there's been a bunch of other stuff. Definitely check out the change log on this one. Um, 
and I hope you guys enjoy it. If you've, got, if you've run into any problems, let us know for sure. If you have any new ideas, of course, join the forums, let us know. We can answer questions there too. Enjoy the new features, guys, and I'll talk to you later.